All right, does everybody understand? How many here feel they can trust your personal judgment? No. <laughs> How many here feel you can trust your memory? No. <laughs> if you get a chance to write things down, write them down. Always write them down in the same place. Put the date on it so you can find it. Put notes on it. How many have wrote something down and go, what the hell was this about? So always put notes to it as to what it's for. What was it really, you know? Get a business card. I got someone's business card. I have no idea where I got it from. Right? Write down in the back where you got it from. What was the situation and the date? Never just accept the, you know, if you, because the brain is freaking worthless. I mean, maybe yours isn't, but mine is. <laughs> I can't trust it. Even, even when I go to teach, I have to check and recheck and check that my brain didn't go off and imagine strange, weird stuff. Does that make sense? I go, wait a minute. How, ever had someone quote scriptures and they drop a word, add a word? Like, what's up, dude? <laughs> can't trust it. I mean, it's nice. I'm glad I got one, but trusting it's like, no. Right. Does that make any sense? Hard? Well, my books, I get regular updates on all archaeological discoveries. I get regular updates on this. Because I want to know. I know. I want to know. Why do you think? Why do you think? I keep track of a straw. I, I keep track of all, all space projects. How many know that we're getting ready to go to Mars? How many know that we saw, we sent two we sent a rocket up and it came down and landed all by itself without anybody interfering? And we we got two more ready to go up and go into space and come back and land. All and they're huge. They're like four story buildings. And no one's going to touch them. It's all artificial intelligence. How many know this? No one's even aware of it. How many know that we've got artificial intelligence that can? look at cells and exactly know if they're diseased or not. And discover it way before it even shows up in the body. We've already, the DNA, artificial intelligence has examined the DNA, knowing exactly where to fix someone who was born blind, and they made the modification of the DNA using CRISPR, now the person can see. And that's a genetic blindness. Do you have any idea what it's like in the next 20 years? It's going to be astounding. Yes? No, everything is going to be like nothing. There's nothing similar. Things that you have right now, nothing now is going to resemble in 10 years. And I mean nothing. People are not aware of the changes that are taking place. And most people are not going to be able to handle it. You have to be able to handle it. You have to be the ones that have adjustable, malleable perceptions of reality. If you don't, you're going to get crushed. Do I make myself clear on this? Because things are changing so fast and so quick, we have the highest suicide rate ever in the world. People are literally committing suicide because they can't handle the changes. All right? And you need to be the strength when people have lost theirs. So when people lose it, you've got to have it together. Is that making sense? Okay. Now, we're going to do another little exercise. Everybody stand up. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Jumping jacks. All right, no. <laughs> All right. All right. I want you to try. I want you now to reach into that wonderful brain you have that you trust so well to make judgments to determine what's right. Let, reach in that magnificent brain you have, and we're going to test to see how extraordinary it is. Are you ready? What if we replace everything in existence with only those things that exist in your reality? You ready? Piece of paper ready? Get a piece of paper out. You're probably going to need... Imagine with you, if you've got a brilliant mind, you'll need at least 40 or 50 pages. If you've got a brilliant mind. All right, ready? Now, you're going to play God. You're going to bring everything to existence. Okay? Everything that is, you're going to bring it into existence. We're going to recreate the world according to your perception 
Are you ready? Of the 7 billion, 738, I'm sorry, 7 billion, 738 million, 344,916 people on Earth as of 23rd of January 2001 at 13.57 a.m. <laughs> How many are in your reality? How many are in your reality? Of that, all that people on earth, how many are part of your reality? Remember, you're recreating reality. If it's not part of your reality, they don't exist. <laughs> uh, we're missing, you see the problem? Because there are a lot of people. So if you create, create reality, were there be anybody missing? I would say seven billion people would be missing. Yeah. More than that, right? Yeah. All right. Anybody missing in your reality? <laughs> Why did you drop them like that? Why did you just let them cease to exist? You don't, not part of your reality. Be careful when you get what you wish for. When you think something is right, you don't understand all that's involved. There's a lot more than what you perceive as reality. Remember Socrates says, there's one thing I know, and that I know nothing. Be malleable. Let your reality be Adjustable. Got it? All right. Of the 20,000 species of fish, how many are in your personal reality? We're talking 20,000 species of fish. Go ahead and list them. See how many you can come up with? If I said people, it would be, have been here like maybe most that you know is about 150 people that you can remember by name. But we're now working with fish. How many fish do you know? Write them down. Then they don't exist in your reality, do they? <laughs> That's a tang, by the way. You've seen that. You see the problem? Because all you have to do is come up with 20,000 species. And there's millions in that one species. That's a lot of fish. You ever go down and have a something fish sandwich? All right. Did I give you a hint for a couple of them? <laughs> You understand how interesting this is. I think I find this fascinating. That my brain is so ridiculously stupid. People say, "Frank, you're stupid." I go, "Yeah, I know that." Tell me something new. <laughs> Gilbert fish. Pardon? Gilbert fish. What? Gilbert fish. That's a that's an insect. <laughs> Shut up. Silverfish is no, it's not a fish. <laughs> All right, how many you got so far? How many fish you got? Of the 20,000 species you've got, how many? Three. All right, you're going to have a real sad world. How many, how many you got? Your world just sucks, okay? How many fish you got? Three fish. How many you got? Three or four. All right. Well, you know what? There's a heck of a lot more fish than that. I mean, we're talking 20,000 different species of fish. Now, if you go diving, you get a chance to recognize them. Everything from the barracuda, you know, it's like, pfft. you get a chance to see all the fish, right? From the trigger fish to all the coral reef fish, from the great bass to the, yeah, you, know, you get a chance to, you know, what the hell's that, you know? There's even a box fish. It looks, yellow box fishes are really weird, too. It's going to look like a ship of a box. There's the puffer fish that blows itself up five times bigger, has little spikes like a porcupine. Rockfish, yeah, I know that one, real personal. All right, so these are some samples to help you generate your imagination. 
All right. How'd you do? Your world sucks. You know that? All right. All right. So let's move on. Of the 6,000 species of reptiles, how many? There are 6,000 different species. How many reptiles do you know? That's the monitor lizard. All reptiles have that, except his. Yes, because his jaws are so big, so when he bites, it makes them bleed to death. Uh, decompose the, the, the tissue of the animal. Right, and prevents clotting. And so the, the animal and it, it just keeps following the blood until it eats it. Like a crocodile, or a crocodile, an alligator. What's the difference? The whole structure is different. They're two different species. All right. So how many, how many did you get? I gave you a whole bunch of them. Six. Of the, of the 6,000 species, you only got six? Don't forget Geico. Geico. That's, that's a gecko. <laughs> that's a gecko. Of the 6,000 species of reptile, how many are in your personal reality? And the answer is pathetic, right? <laughs> Your world more than sucks. <laughs> Any one of them missing? Yeah, like 98.99%. All right, here we go. This one's easy. Of the 1,000 species of amphibians, how many are in your personal reality? Our frog is one. And? Salamander. But he's an amphibian. Yeah, you got it. What else is there? All right, to give you an idea, these are amphibians. There's some so small, they'll fit on the head of a match. That's, a, that's not a snake. That's an amphibian with no legs. Really weird creature. Then there are simians. There's one on a dime, a little tiny frog. There are all kinds of, um, and these not are the same frogs. That's, in, that's from Japan. That's a massive, right. And then there's one in, um, this one is the weirdest one. This one's in Mexico. And this thing, you cut off its leg, it grows it back. You cut off its arm, it grows it back. Like, whoa. So, and it's huge. It, it, it's called a, uh, a, a, a quack. It's got a ridiculous name. It kind of, it's an Indian name, right? But it's IQ, IQTL or something like that. It's really weird. But that's right now, science are studying that to figure out how to regrow arms and fingers. Amphibians find that survival works best when they resemble a rock. That's why toads, you can't see them until they see them hop and go, ah, I see them, right? Now, octopus are a totally different creature entirely. They're not. That's a different sea creature, but anyway. All right, so here we go. This should be a piece of cake for everybody. 5,416 different species of mammal. Go! I gave you a new one today, didn't I? A dolphin is a mammal, you, you got it. It's not a fish, a whale is a, what kind of whale? No, no, no. You got sperm. You got baleen. Right? Pardon? Beluga whale. Pardon? Orca is another what type? See what I'm saying? I just gave you a whole bunch of mammals, but they live in the what? Remember, there are some fish that, some birds that swim and don't fly. So, everybody got it? You got horses. You got cows. You got antelopes. You got giraffes. You got elephants. Right? Right. Everybody got those? You got orangutans, chimpanzees, human beings. Anyone have human beings on your list? All right. Thank God you put that on there or it wouldn't make it in your world. What? They're thankful you put human being in your world. At least somebody will survive. Okay. So here's some more. We got all kinds of, or and you're here of an orbi or nanala. These are actual species of animal. A mongoose. A safari, a Steinbeck, a Tisibi, house mouse, that's a hard one, right? 
chipmunk, field mouse, shrew, mole rat, mole and a rat, see? And a mole rat, it's a different animal entirely. Dormouse, pygmy mouse, climbing, these are all mouses here. Then we got an ard wolf, a cape pole cat, right? And you got minks, right? So you see how many, had, how many were on your list? Honey badger, badass honey badger. You would come up with honey badger, yeah. And you got your rams, yes. All right, does everybody understand how many realize that your world would really suck, right? They wouldn't have cats and dogs. Okay, good. All right, that's what about bunny rabbits? Bunny rabbits, all right. You would say bunny rabbits, yeah. You would say bunny rabbits. And we got wolves or coyotes. Don't want those in your world, okay? I understand. I won't tell anybody. <laughs> Anyone missing? The answer was not yeah, but heck yeah. A whole bunch are missing, right? That's who I got, not who I'm missing. That'd be a long time. All right. In a world reconstructed from your personal reality, would there be any missing life? The answer would be what? Yeah, big time. All right. So how about this? Of the, tw of the two million species of insects, how many do you know? I mean, this is your world you're building. You, you won't miss anything. How many insects you got? Pardon? Yeah, that's an insect. <laughs> I mean, all you got to do is walk out. You got it, all right? Like at night, I have the light on the back, and I have the whole wall covered with insects, right? And I got these praying mantis going out there, taking out each one, and showing them down. Then I got other animals. The birds come in there and eat that. Then I got the bats come down and eat them, right? So it's, a, it's just sitting watching the war going on as everybody eats each other, right? <laughs> but you got big old grasshoppers, and you got locusts, and katydids, right? You ever seen those things? That sounds like, you know, what the heck's going on out there, right? It's like a rattlesnake, and it's a katydid. By the way, a rattlesnake is also a reptile. Anyway, but you get a chance to see reality. The more you're away from the city, the more you get to see. All right, what about a scorpion? Where does that come from? Arachnid. That's right, it's an arachnid. Same thing as the spider. We found a whole bunch more we didn't know existed. Like in, in way down deep in the ocean, down the earth, they found a whole bunch of freaking insects that we never knew existed. The, the brand new species. And then, and then we went to the Antarctic and we dug down into the ocean that was underground like for a million years and we found more, like, oh wow. So of the 70,000 species of bacteria, how many do you know? Without bacteria, you don't have cheese. Without bacteria, your trees can't grow. Nothing, you, you can't make any compost because no bacteria can eat it. Got to have bacteria to eat it to break it down into something your plants can use. So how many bacteria do you know? Most of us do hear about them, right? You buy fruit or vegetables from the store, and they weren't cleaned right, and you eat it, and you get what? Salmonella, right? 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 E. coli, right, another one. You see, you see, now we're getting into bacteria. Now inside your gut to help you with digestion are also bacteria. They're your friends, they're your allies. They live in there to help you out your intestines, to help you digest. Take, take antibiotics, it wipes them out, now you got massive stomach problems. You gotta take, prob what do they call it? Pardon? Probiotics, right, to try and replenish them. Okay, got it? So there's a whole bunch of bacteria, and we didn't even know about the intestinal bacteria until like about 20 years ago. We were like, what the heck's going on in there? So they thought they'd wipe them out, and the person became extremely sick. They go, okay, put them back in. And they put back in. The person was okay, okay. Obviously, these are necessary, right? Experimentation on people. Ha, <laughs> you need this. Okay. All right, this, so now we move on to the next one. Of the 30,000 species of protozoa, well, it's what gives you your oxygen. They sit on top of the ocean, and, and they convert carbon dioxide into oxygen. It's not the trees, it's the protozoa in the ocean. Ta-da! They got chlorophyll. Algae. Well, no, algae's next. 
this is protozoa. This is what the, the little fish eat, and the little stuff eats and goes on up. In fact, well, I don't want to go there, but krill eat it, and then the whales eat the krill. Big baleen whales. No, your your planet's dead. <laughs> it just is. <laughs> you miss any of these, you got to have some of these, or you lose the food chain and everything collapses. Fifty thousand species of algae. That's like if you look at my tank, you can see some of them. What kind of seaweed? That's now al that's algae is seaweed. Where's how many different species of algae? There's the crest. There's a broadleaf. There's several kinds of algae. In fact, off of, off of California, San Diego here, or going a little bit further north, you would there used to be great uh, uh, seaweed, right? They call it kelp, and that was on the and that kelp. In fact, you can see it wash up on the shore. That's kelp. That's algae. If you look at the top of my tank, you got the green stuff. That's algae. That's very small. Then you got some that go in the sheets. Like when I take the tape off my tank, it's all a sheet of algae. And it just peels off like paper. The algae is covered. Algae is the source of all life of the ocean. And as a result, what's in the ocean feeds us, converts our, our carbon dioxide into oxygen. So, by the way, you see what happened? We had COVID virus and they stopped everything. Right? Everything stopped. No transportation, everything. And what do you think happened to the temperature of the earth? It went down. Carbon dioxide does not heat the planet. Carbon dioxide cools the planet. So that was a big error. Everybody goes, oops. Check it out. The whole time COVID happened, our planet got not warmer, but cooler by taking away the carbon dioxide. If you're going to do that, you might as well buy a whole, buy, you must be selling a whole bunch of coves and heavy gear. But you know that's what we're taught, and we think it's true. And then we find out it's not. Always check, recheck, and what? Check again. All right. Here's the most important question of all. You ready? Now, how many have had this questions asked you before? Now, what happened because you didn't have the answers this time? You put the carpet over the hole. And now I burned through that carpet. You're going to put another carpet on top, or would you like to find out more? Does that make sense? Because if you know something that you were, you lack knowledge or ignorant, and you put a carpet over it, and then next time they punch a hole in it, now you've got to find another carpet to replace it. You've got to learn where you're lacking knowledge and find out how to increase it. Does that make sense? Because otherwise you'd be depending on everybody what else. Not good. Because then they're the masters and you're the slaves. Of the 91 natural occurring elements that everything consists of, how many exist in your reality? There's 91 natural occurring. I'm not going to deal with all 119. I'm only going to deal with 91. Everything has it. Write it down. See it. So first one, yep, yeah, you gave it away to everybody else. That's cool. Thank you. Huh? Thank you. <laughs> that was a thank you from over there. Pardon? Gold is silver. That's another element. Why are you giving it to everybody else right now? <laughs> are you trying to tell me you got holes in your, in your knowledge? All right. How you doing? How many elements? We're talking about building your own world here. Oxygen is an element, yep. What else? All right, let's merge everybody's together. What do you got, sir? Hydrogen. All right, go. Oxygen. All right. Shame on you. You're building your own world. Iron, gold and silver, zinc, right, uh -huh. not sink, 
sink is in the kitchen. All right, okay. <laughs> Zinc, okay. All right, anything else? All right, all right. I'm waiting for this one. Go. Can't think? All right. I won't tell anybody. All right, what do you got? Water, no, no, that's not. All right, which is? Hydrogen and oxygen. That's a combination. Magnesium, very good. Yeah, she said that. Okay. All right, here we go. What you got? Selenium is very important for an aquarium, by the way. All coral has to have it. So. All right. How much you got? Not, not too bad. All right, let's see how your worlds would hold up with just the elements that you made. Ready? All right. Hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, and sulfur. You have life. You missed them, you have no life. All life has to have this. That's what makes DNA or RNA. You don't have them, your planet has no life. And if you put life on it, it ain't going to last. Because if you don't have a regular, that's why, should you be breathing a hydrogen? Yes. Should you be, in which, or drinking it in the form of water? Yes. Should you have carbon? Yes. Everything you eat has carbon in it. All right. There's a nitrogen. Yes, you're breathing that in. Part of your con part of what you bring into your body. Oxygen, like really, really important. All right. Phosphorus. That's what you get when, when you eat fruit. High in phosphorus and fruit, right? And then sulfur. Those come from plants as well. So, yes, also from eating meat. Okay, missing one, then no DNA, no RNA. How's your plant doing so far? In other words, no life. Okay, let's try one more. You ready for one more? Let's hear one. One more, right? Let's look at the interior. Does it have a crust? Does it have a mantle? Does it have an inner core? Everybody goes, yes, it does. Well, then if it's so, these are the elements you must have. Nickel and iron. No nickel, you can't hold the core together. It has to be a nickel-iron combination. Total temperature, 1,000 to 10,800 degrees Fahrenheit. Hot stuff. Mantle. What's the mantle made out of? That's this part right here. Made of silicon, iron, magnesium, aluminum, and oxygen. You're missing any one of those elements, you're not going to have a planet. All right, the last is, a, is where life lives on, which is the crust. Has to have oxygen, silicon, aluminum, iron, calcium, sodium, potassium, and magnesium, or no topsoil. How's your plant doing so far? If you're missing any of these, your plant's not going to hold together. And if the plant's not holding together, it won't look very nice. It will look kind of like. It will look like this. That sucks. Can't hold an atmosphere because you need the heavier elements, the right ones, to react with the oxygen and the nitrogen that has to be able to form a crust that forms the oxygen to be able to have it transmit and, and stay in balance. You lose these, then everything falls apart. It looks like Mars. Huh? Yeah, we are losing a lot of things. Most of us are mind, right? Okay. <laughs> so when we realize we, we, made, big, we made big mistakes, right? we, we feel like garbage, right? Like when we, our reality gets hit, right? So what's the solution? Like when you feel really, really bad, right? You ready to find out? <laughs> All right. No, I, I want to tell you a story, right? Once upon a time, no. I, someone came to me and they told me, this, that certain gentleman came to me, he goes, I don't know what to do. And I go, what's the matter? He goes, I was sleeping 
And my wife, in the middle of the night, jumped up and started beating on me. I go, what? He goes, this is the second night. She just, I'm sleeping, and she, she wakes up in the light and just starts beating on me. I go, she goes, how, she kept screaming, how dare you, how dare you? And, he, and then he wakes up in the morning, she goes, how could you do this to me? He goes, do what? What did I do? I don't want to go into details here, but she had dreamed a dream, and it was so what? Real. In fact, from that day for several months, she hated her husband for the dream. She hated him because it was so what? Real. And it, had, it was all her imagination. So this is where the problem comes in, is that we can't tell the difference between our reality and our dream. When you have a dream, it actually affects how you think because your brain thinks it actually happened. Do you understand the problem here? Watching a movie, your brain can't tell the difference between the movie and it really happening. That's how deadly movies are. Should I tell you don't watch movies? No, you can watch movies, but make sure it's a very small screen and you not don't get in front of those screens like this and they're really, really big because you can't, you can't block it. It's made to go right to your subconscious, bypassing your, your, all your filters. There's, the research is done. It's final. It's what it is. So you actually are experiencing, your brain thinks you are experiencing what you're seeing. And many people respond to movies and act out the movie they saw. How many think I'm joking? I'm not. People reference this. This is just like in the movie. <laughs> uh, we got things bass backwards here. <laughs> Reality is what's important, not the movies. I know it's hard to believe, but movies are not true. The whole world doesn't end and gets, gets fixed in 45 minutes. That's not reality. Relationships are solved in 45 minutes. That's not how it works. Does everybody understand that our world is all deceiving us as to what is real and what is not? And it's not getting better. It's getting what? Worse. So you have to be able to keep yourself under control, right? So understanding how your brain works, if you've got this gap where you were wrong and you have a default assumption, even though how many have done the same thing wrong over and over again? Anyone done that? Why? Because you still got that hole there and you keep falling back into it. So how do you get out of the hole? All right? Remember, your dreams, the brain cannot know the difference between your dreams and what? How many have ever daydreamed? Ah, wait, one, two, three. Ah. Can you make your daydream as real as reality? One, two, three. Can you control your daydreaming? Yes. If you don't take control of your brain, the world will. All right. This guy has done the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. And he keeps getting caught in that same situation again and again. And the problem is, once you do it the first time, you feel like shit. You do it a second time, like, what the hell's wrong with me? You do it the third time, like, what is the problem? And then you keep doing it over and over again because you keep falling into the same hole. And each time it goes deeper and deeper and what? Deeper. Until finally people go, I can't stop myself. And then they commit suicide when it can be stopped. You understand? But what we keep replaying is not the solutions but we keep replaying the same what? Problems. We keep replaying the same problems. And then we do, like I, asked, I, I had two places I can go. I used to go take 805 South, and then once a week I take 805 North. And because the last time I went and took 805 North twice, I got my car to go South, and I jumped in my car and went what? North. 
and took me an hour to get back to where I was at. And it wasn't so bad, except I kept doing it over and over again. So you know what I did? I'm going to teach you what to do to stop doing the same thing over and over again. All in favor of interesting situation? All right. Because the next time you think of something that brings you pain, then, then it's not the same pain. It's worse. Do you understand? You condemn yourself, and then the next day you do it again, and you can condemn yourself even worse. Does that make sense? Nothing worse. Like, like people say, I'm trying to lose weight. All right, you're trying to lose weight. All right, how about this? I will not eat a, a McDonald's hamburger with sesame seed bun and a, and a hot <laughs> piece of meat with cheese on it and mustard and ketchup. What are you doing? I'm not magnifying. <laughs> I'm magnifying the very thing I don't want to eat. So as a result, what am I drawn to? Not doing it or eating it? Doing it. So whenever you say you're, you, I, I, I'm not going to do, the, and you go into great detail, of, oh, I, I'm not going to eat it. What are you doing? So don't focus on the problem. Focus on the what? Solution. You made an error. Now what? You're going to make it again unless you do the right what? Thing. But you can't undo it because it's already what? Done. But the brain is amazing. See how, how you figured it out? Do that with your situations. Fade them out. Get real clear and then fade it out just like that. Let me explain. Our brain cannot stay stationary, right? It can't just null out and do nothing. Neurons are firing all the time. The brain must think. Then give it the things to think about. It cannot go into a comatose state. It just doesn't work. Unless they inject you and you're like, you got intravenous and then they eye out. But most of the time, there's no such thing as, I'm going to give my brain rest. The brain does never rest. It's, it's working hard, as hard as the heart. Some parts are working more than others, but nonetheless, when you dream, the same part of the brain that you see things with through your eyeballs is activated. Same part. The brain thinks that your dream and movies are reality. Do you want to change someone's perspective, perspective, perspective on life? Have them watch a movie. The movie will change. Their, I mean, you're, you can watch people that go into a kung fu movie. What do they do coming out? Kya! Kya! Right? They do that. They kick and all that stuff. What, what is your problem? They did it in the movie. In their mind, they did it in the movie. They were the hero. You've got to imagine. You've got to daydream. You've got to really see yourself doing something, right? To undo what you did wrong. So, Matthew 6, 22, the light of the body is the eye, right? If therefore thy eye be single, only good, only everything that relates to God's word. Now, how old is the Bible? That's 8,000 years, well, almost 10,000 years old. It accumulates all of man's greatest wisdom that God ever imparted to man. We all concentrate on the outside. God could care less about the outside. He only cares about the what? What's going on the inside? Everything we need to take care of the inside, God has given us, if we would take the time to learn it. The world only wants your body puffed up. We have plastic surgeons that are making more money than anyone else, giving people and appearances that aren't true, that are false and conditional. Matthew 6, 22, the light of the body is the eye. Which one, the left or the right? No, it's this thing that sees, the visual cortex. It sees. It sees. I took you, went back to your house, didn't you? Sitting right in your seat, you went back to your house, walked in it, even looked at your unmade bed. And no one knew about it, but you 
Now the whole room knows about it. <laughs> but you understand, you saw it. It was real to you. If therefore the eye be single, everything in alignment with God's word, thy whole body should be filled with light. Whatever you already make mistakes, how can you undo your mistakes? How can you undo your errors? How can you undo your shame, your guilt, your, all that bullshit? Because the word says, there is therefore now no what? Condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. What does mean no mean? Means none, absolutely. Well, I've got these, I did some pretty bad shit. How many have ever been the cause of someone's death? How about the cause of two or three people's death? Now, I know, I know, it was, everybody told me it wasn't my fault. But when you see the someone who's dead because of your stupidity, that tears you up. I don't care what you say. When you're sitting there with someone because you did something stupid or you didn't do something right, you died. Now, that's not so bad until the second one dies. Then what happens when the third one dies? You're like, what is freaking wrong with me? Obviously, there's a hole there, isn't it? I didn't fix the hole. I just put a what? Right. A carpet or something on top of it. And the thing, it happened again. I just put something over the top of it. Don't put anything on top of it. Fill it in. Make sure it's gone. Well, how do you do that with something that's the past? How do you do that with what you've done? Can't go back and undo it. The answer is, the effects in the world, you can't. But the effects on yourself, you can. Remember I told you, the brain doesn't know the difference between a movie and a dream. Got it? Now, let's look at, let's say, for instance, he's looking at the, the, um, the sun, and he turns away. Can he bring it back to memory? Can he recreate that sunset in his mind? The answer is what? Yes. He can recreate it in his mind. Even though he's looking away, he can recreate it in his mind. Can you recreate a sunset in your mind? Matthew 6, 23. But if thy eye be evil, thy whole body shall be filled with what? Darkness. If you don't have light, anything else other than God, anything else other than light is darkness. I don't care what thoughts you have. If they're not in line to preserve, preserve life, preserve your, the future, preserve others, doesn't benefit everybody, including yourself, then it's not of God. And it's just darkness. It may seem right. It may be popular, but it's still what? Wrong. Does that make sense? For if thy eye be evil and the whole body should be filled with darkness, if therefore the light, and you think it's light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that what? There is no, you may call it light, but it's not. And that's how you look at things. Does it benefit yourself and everybody in the long run? The answer of God. And all of God's word does that. It benefits not only now, but continuously, and not only yourself, but everybody else. We got to put light where there's what? What's in there? All the bad things he did, all the stupid mistakes he made, the decisions that were disastrous, that he can't undo, all that's in there. Is that light or darkness? When you think or I think of the past and all the dumb shits we did, all the stupid mistakes and all the hurt and pain we gave ourselves and others, that's all darkness. That's all darkness. So what do you do? What do you do? I told you the brain does not know the difference between a movie and what? A dream. It thinks it's the same. You take responsibility, number one. You got to accept. Don't be like an alcoholic. I don't have an, a drinking problem. And then next thing you know, he, he's hiding in the closet going, good, 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 right. You understand the problem. You can't deny the problem exists. 
By denying it, you're just putting a carpet on top of the hole. Take responsibility. Okay. It's wrong. I did wrong. Okay. All right. Now, what's the next? So, what do you do? Well, grab a piece of paper and a pencil, and you list what the hell you did or where you were wrong. You list it out. You write it out. You write it out. And it may hurt. It may make you cry. It may make you, like, ah! <laughs> just write it out. Every detail, every, every pain that is, every sorrow, just write it out. Get it all on paper. You know what you did wrong. Here's, the, here's where and how it was wrong. Everything was wrong. You write it out. List what you did with the correct answer or response. Now list it again with the correct answer. And you see it yourself doing it the right way. Or if you don't, because you've already done the wrong, you're going to keep doing wrong. Does that make sense? We are creatures of habit. If you've developed a habit of doing something wrong, you're always going to do it wrong. You've got to undo it. You've got to remove that wrong from your brain. Turn that, that darkness into what? Light. That's what you did with the correct answer, the correct response. You list it. What was, should have been done. Then what? Visualize having the right answer or the correct response. Visualize it. Dream it. See yourself doing the right thing. Keep seeing yourself doing it. Every day, go through the right thing. Seeing yourself do the right thing. Doing the right thing. Doing the right thing. Every morning, every evening, the right thing. Get in the habit to where you... Take that thing, that, that stupid darkness, and you just shove that candle, that light, right down its throat, and poof, it's gone. Then when that opportunity comes up, guess what? You won't do it. Because you've already programmed yourself not to what? Do it. Isn't that cool? So, Frank, how many mistakes have you made? You know how many books I got? About that many mistakes, right? I could fill all of these books. Why? Because I tried. I tried everything that someone told me. I tried everything that I learned. I put it to the test. Is it true? Does it work? Does it fit? And I made mistakes upon mistakes upon mistakes. I was trained a certain way, and I did it that way, and it killed somebody. So what happened when a similar situation came up? I did it again, and someone died. And it was not your fault. You were following orders. Hell with that. I caused someone's death. Now what? What would have been the correct response? What would it be? Because I'll tell you what, you can push it down and you can push it down and you can push it down, but the first time that even similar happens, it unleashes a whirlwind of sorrow. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Speaking from personal experience, of course, you don't show it to anybody. You make sure that you're, the door's locked and then you let loose because the pain is so bad and the emptiness is so hard. You replace the darkness with what? Light. Visualize it. The brain cannot determine the difference from a movie and a dream. Got it? And believe me, if it happened to you once, it's going to happen what? Again. And again. And again. You drill your mind with the right action. You drill your mind with the right response. So it doesn't happen again. Make it real. The most effective is to picture yourself in a movie theater. And as you sit down in the movie theater, the guy, the projector, runs everything that from the time it ended, runs it backwards to the time it actually happened. Runs the whole movie back. 
That whole situation happened to you, it runs it like a movie, backward, like you're in the movie theater, sitting in a chair, and you're watching the whole movie run backward, and you see everybody going, going backward, right? You see everything going backward, and then it's running forward, and right there, where you made your mistake, you jump in and do what? The right thing. Then everything goes dark. Movie starts again. It's running backwards. And it goes, and it goes all the way back. And it, and it runs forward, and it's right to that point. And now what do you do? The right thing. And you feel so relieved. Then it goes forward, and then it goes dark. You replace that darkness with what? Light. And you do that to everyone so that you have learned, you have an asset with the, right with the experience and the right action. Otherwise, you'll do it again and again and again, and it's going to hurt worse and worse and worse. How do I know these things? The brain cannot know the difference between a dream, a movie, and reality. So what you do, you combine the two together, the movie and the dream. Run it backwards to when it happened and do the right thing. Do it six times. Got it? And then the next morning, do it again. The evening before you go to bed, do it again. And by the time you do that, it's part of your reality. And it, what happened, the darkness is no longer valid. Only what? Light. Does everybody understand what I'm talking about? Anyone here have an imagination? Anyone here have a very good imagination? Put it to use correctly. Make your, make your life a lighthouse, a source of light, not darkness. Let go of that which is wrong. Don't hold on to it because you'll do it again. Let it what? Go. Replace it. Cleave to that which is right. If you've got things that are wrong in your head, don't ignore them. Repair them. Replace them. Got it? Or else you're going to do it again and again and again. And the condemnation. And people, because they're caught in this loop, they condemn themselves. They look for drugs. They look for alcohol to, to, to repair the emptiness and the hurt inside. And they just take more and more alcohol, more and more drugs, hoping to take care of that. Take care of yourself. You don't need drugs. You don't freaking need alcohol. If anyone could be stuck in alcohol, I could. Anyone could be stuck in drugs, I could. Repair it yourself. It's God and Christ in you, yes or no. You think God's, God's going to let you sit back there with this hole in your heart? The feeling of condemnation, of loss. Replace it. Get rid of it. Put only that which is right inside you. Redo the action with the right action. The correct response. Number one, take the responsibility. Did I do it? Yep, I did it. Now what do you do? List what you did, where you were wrong. I can redo it with no problem. But now I have a different ending, don't I? I know what the other ending. How many of you watched two different, watched the same movie but had different endings? You ever watched two movies, watch the same different endings? No big deal, right? So you got two movies. You just prefer one. Got it? An alternate ending. You give it the alternate ending. Alternate ending. You ever seen a movie that had two different endings? They had two different 
or even three. Some of them have four. Blade Runner is a perfect example of that. They got like four different endings, right? Oh, it's your life. You're the editor. Put in your own. Not that you don't know about that movie. Is this is the movie you've edited, and this is the one that's right. You're the director. Cut it right. You're not denying it. Yeah, we, we, put, we cut it out of the final. We know it's there, but we, didn't, we, we cut it out. Do you understand? Yeah, wherever you made the mistake, replace that darkness with light, the right decision, the right action. Now it won't be sitting there weighing you down. When you do this and you do it correctly, you don't walk around going, oh, I'm such an asshole. You don't do that. And you're ready for the next time it comes because now you know what to do. And you won't be doing the same stupid shit over and over again. Is that making sense? Your brain cannot tell. You know how you feel when you come out of a movie sometimes. Oh, oh sorry. Right? You're all upset. Oh, that shouldn't have happened. Freaking, what are you watching the movie for? You got your own movie to worry about. You're just watching someone's imagination. Use your imagination to edit your own story. Put the right things in there. Replace every damn stupid shit you did. Replace it with that which is good. Fill yourself with light. Let go of that which was wrong. That was the wrong edit. This is the new edit. Is that making sense? Every movie has three or four cuts. But the one that's the finally one that's public is the one you edit. You're aware of what you did before. That's irrelevant. This is my new, what do you call it, final cutting. Huh? Director's the director's cut. Any directors we have in here? Edit your movies. Replace the darkness with light. Allow only that which is good in the vision of your mind. Got it? And if all you have is the correct answers, the correct responses in your life, whoa. You define the word awesome in the dictionary. You open it up and it's got your picture in it. Check it out. <laughs> That's it. What the heck? All right. Push the wrong button. I'm too excited. <laughs> John 8, 31 and 32. Then Jesus said unto him, Jews which believed on him, if you continue in my word, the word is what? Light. The things that are right of God, God cares about. Not the things, the dumb shit you did. So replace them. Do what you put the right things in there. Do the director's cut. If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the what? Truth. And the truth shall make you free. We are learners and winners. Got it? You're either learning or you're winning. There's no other answer. Well, I'm a loser. You're a learner. Did you learn from your mistakes? What's the proper answer? Put that in the place. That makes you a what? A learner. Till you can become a winner. That's the only choice you got. Because there is no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Why? Because you replaced the stupidity, the dumbass shit you did, with the right action. You did your own editor's cut. If you need help, I'll help you. Make sense? 
The world has winners and losers, not us. We have learners and what? Winners. You're the directors of your own movie. Give it an alternate ending. Make it stick. Or you can have this. I think the other ones are preferred. Let that fade away. Just fade away. Doesn't make the director's cut. That's the true way of life. God bless you. You are God's what? Best. Best. That's right.